Welcome to Small Arm Solutions. What we're looking at here is the Surefire Optimized Bolt Carrier Group. Now, those of you who know, I did a, a video series on enhanced bolt carrier groups, oh, about a year or so ago. And this is one you guys had asked me to do, but I had contacted uh, Surefire at that time, and they had not had them available yet, so they weren't ready. So even though these things were shown at the 2017 SHOT Show, uh, they weren't really available until probably over the last six or eight months or so. Uh, I want to thank one of my viewers for writing this for us to be able to do a review on it. Uh, so this is going to be pretty interesting because there's a little bit of history that goes along with this too. So I think what we're going to talk about first is, you know, why? Why was this? There's a couple of things. Um, what they wanted to do was to deal with a couple issues of the M4. First was unlocking, uh, delaying the unlocking time. They wanted to lower the cycle rate. Uh, they wanted a lot more time for the magazine feed or more time for the, the cartridge to present itself so it would be fed reliably. And also to eliminate bolt carrier mounts. So the gentleman that they went to, his name was L. James Sullivan. Now, we want to talk about who L. James Sullivan is. Um, now, I've seen some of the Surefire, uh, some of their propaganda that states that uh, L. James Sullivan was the designer of the M16. That is not true. The designer of the M16 was Gene Stoner. Uh, what happened was uh, you had the AR-10 that was designed by Gene Stoner. And then when the Air Force came up with the requirement for the 22 caliber, Basically, what, uh, what happened was was L. James Sullivan and Bob Fremont, uh, they were his draftsmen. What they were told to do under supervision of Gene Stoner was to scale down the AR-10 to the 22 caliber, which ended up becoming the AR-15. So when you say des you know, who designed it, well, it was a Stoner designed the AR-10. These gentlemen, what their job was to do was to scale it down to fire the 22 caliber. Now, L. James Sullivan also did the same thing with the M14. Uh, he went to work for Ruger, uh, and he has scaled down the M14 to become the Mini-14. And he's also worked with Surefire. Uh, he was also the designer of the 60 and 100 round uh, magazines for the AR-15 M16 that were put out by Surefire as well. And, and uh, Mr. Sullivan has done a lot of things throughout the throughout his, his career. I mean, this gentleman is still hot and heavy in, in development. But I sort of want to clarify that because I am a historian, and uh, you know, it's, it's sort of not right to say he designed it uh, because it was a it was a sort of design that basically what he did was scale it down along with Mr. Fremont. So it was Mr. Sullivan, Mr. Fremont, who did scale the rifle down to uh, the AR-15 to fire the 22 caliber. So that's just a little bit of history for you. Now, going over what this thing was designed to do, uh, we need to talk a little bit about uh, Lewis Machine and Tool as well. Because around the 2002-2003 time period, SOCOM approached Carl Lewis about making an enhanced bolt carrier group because of some inherent issues that SOCOM was having with the M4. And one of those was failures to extract due to high residual pressure in the cartridge case at the moment of extraction. Basically what that means is because you have a shorter gas system, the bolt unlocks sooner than it did with a 20 inch uh, barrel and there was still pressure in there. So as the cartridge case is trying to be pulled out, there's still pressure in there. So the extractor has to work that much harder, especially if you had an over gas rifle or you had one with a uh, very heavily eroded gas port, it would cause failures to extract. That was one of the issues that they had. They also had the extraction issues, uh, so they wanted a better extractor. So Carl went to look at those problems and came up with what we refer to as the LMT Enhanced Bolt Carrier Group. Now, if you look at one of the design uh, requirements or design changes that was done with the Surefire Group was to allow for more dwell time. Well, Carl Lewis did that uh, in 2002-2003 time period by altering the cam track on the bolt carrier. The cam track, which you see here, is what determines at what point that the bolt starts to begin to unlock. And by altering the dimensions in there and the geometry on that, allowed it to stay closed slightly longer. And that gave more time for them to be able to have pressures drop so the cartridge case can be removed much more easily. The same thing was done by Mr. Sullivan on the optimized uh, bolt carrier group here. So they altered the cam track to allow it to have more dwell time. With the LMT bolt carrier group, they did major changes to the bolt as well. You have a massively overhauled bolt here with a fully supported breech face. You have dual extractors. You have a much more aggressive extractor. You have stress relief on the locking lugs. This was probably my one disappointment with the Surefire optimized bolt carrier group was the fact that this is a standard bolt. Uh, they wanted to a lot of a lot of efforts to change a lot of things in the carrier, but they did nothing to the bolt. So that's probably one of the things that I was sort of disappointed in. Now, the LMT version met and exceeded everything that SOCOM had asked it to do, but the only issue was it was not compatible with the 20-inch uh, rifle. Basically, by, by changing the uh, cam track and the way that the, the bolt unlocks and how much time that, that took, all, all those things together made it so the uh, bolt carrier would not function properly and fully automatic with the 
20 inch barrel basically what you would get is bolt carrier bounce due to the way that it works and i imagine if you were to put the optimized bolt carrier group in a 20 inch barrel uh, with, a, with a buffer that was designed for it i imagine you would see the exact same thing with it so as we previously stated uh, the alteration of the cam track according to surefire it gives about a 15 percent more additional drop in pressure uh, at the point of unlocking so you're dropping about 50 percent more pressure out the barrel uh, and allowing the cartridge case to contract that much more now we're going to start looking at some of the real interesting changes on it. What we want to take a look at here is the distances that you see here. You have a modified carrier key on the Surefire, which as you can see only uses one of these screws. And you can see how this is all left solid. And this goes all the way to the rear. What it allows you to do is clear the flange and the lower receiver, which allows the bolt carrier to go further back into the receiver, which will slow down the cyclic rate. It will allow more time for the cartridges to present themselves in the magazine in case you have a... Uh, weak magazine spring or, or whatnot, it allows more time for feeding. And what we're going to do now is we're going to talk a little about the buffers as well. Now with the optimized bolt carrier, you have to have a shorter buffer to allow the bolt carrier to move further into the receiver extension. So this is shut, this is cut down right here. This has two tungsten weights in it. There's a regular bumper on the bottom. Now as you can see how it's shorter. Now due to the fact that you have to eliminate uh, one of your weights, depending on whether it's going to be a tungsten weight or a steel weight, you will have an issue with bolt carrier bounce. So in order to make the design so you would be able to have the bolt carrier go into the further into the receiver, missing a, a weight, what Surefire did or what Mr. Sullivan did was he designed a pinned-in weight that goes into the back of the carrier. What this does is it regulates the carrier bounce, which basically eliminates a bolt carrier bounce. Now, I've tried this in a couple different barrels uh, in this with situation, heavier barrels as well as lighter barrels, and it certainly does the job. But, you know, th this is one of the things you eliminate one benefit of having three weights to have to add an additional piece in here you know you're sort of canceling each other out on that but uh, when we talk a little bit more further about some of the results we'll see uh, where this does truly shine now the finish you have on here is the dlc or diamond light -like carbon uh, self-lubricating finish and you also have an s-line coating uh, to reduce friction so you certainly have some of the newer wonder finishes right of the manganese phosphate so what we're going to do now is we're going to show you what the difference is by having the bolt carrier go into there what we have here is a couple lower receivers um, I've removed the, the, the hammers just to make this a little bit easier for you to be able to see. First, what we're going to do is we're going to look at a standard bolt carrier group. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop the buffer from the standard bolt carrier group in the receiver. And now we're going to drop in the bolt carrier. If you look at the amount of, of room the bolt carrier has to accelerate, it is virtually nothing. Uh, it's, it's, it, what this allows it to do is to halt the bolt without taking a lot of wear and tear on the bolt catch and the uh, receiver. So that's the standard. Now what we're going to take a look at is what the optimized bolt carrier does. Now, as you can see, we have about an inch of acceleration before it strikes the, the, the bolt catch. This is probably the biggest concern that I have uh, with this system is the fact that uh, at Colt, uh, with a 9 millimeter submachine gun, we had a very similar issue due to the fact that uh, there was no bolt carrier, per se. You just had a bolt. So you would have that half inch to accelerate for the bolt carrier to smack into the bolt catch. And what that eventually did was it broke bolt catches, or it could also damage the receiver from all that impact force, which you don't have with a standard. So this is probably the only real concern that I have. But you can see, by having it go further back into the receiver extension, and further forward, it does slow down uh, that that uh, scythic rate to allow that magazine to present that round uh, quicker. So according to Surefire, you have an additional 60% amount of travel uh, versus what you have with the standard bolt carrier on my left-hand side. And as we see, uh, that does do what they intend, to, intend for it to do. Due to the fact you're using a different buffer, you do have to have a special spring to go along with this as well. Because if you were to use the original spring, you would come and have a, a, a tolerance tack on the spring. And what that stack would do is you would, it would bottom out on the spring instead of hitting the rear of the receiver. And that would cause damage to the, to the receiver as well. So you have to have the uh, modified buffer or spring that goes along with the buffer. Brandon from the gun room, uh, Shando, Texas here, was kind enough to come out and meet us at the range and let us use his full auto lower receiver. So what we did was we wanted to get a baseline of what a standard full automatic rifle would have for a cyclic rate. The ammunition that I used was the Black Hills 55 grain full metal jacket. And the barrel was a 11 and a half inch barrel that was uh, slightly heavy. And we had a standard uh, H buffer in there. So we fired a burst of 30 and had a cyclic rate of 905 rounds per second as you can see from the video. What we're going to do now is we're going to fire a 30 round burst 
with the Surefire Optimized Bolt Carrier Group and get a cyclic rate. So next we replace the buffer spring in the, in the buffer as well as the bolt carrier with the Surefire Optimized Bolt Carrier Group and we fired another string. Now we're going to do a 30 round burst with a standard H buffer and the standard bolt carrier group. Same ammunition as the Surefire. Now, as you may or may not be able to see, there was a major difference in cyclic rate. We dropped down to 750 rounds a minute, so we had a decrease in 155 rounds per minute. So does the optimized bolt carrier decrease cyclic rate? Absolutely. Again, we're looking at you know around 100 rounds per minute. Now, the only concern that I have is when we get down to 750, uh, we're getting to the lowest uh, lowest end of the cyclic rate limit on the uh, on the rifle. The mill spec for uh, for a carbine is 750 950 rounds per minute. So my concern would be if this was a, in a different weather condition, uh, for, for instance, a very cold New York or a very cold uh, environment where you have the ammunition that has the changes that occur in lower temperatures, which causes port pressure and chamber pressure to drop, I believe you would, you would drop below uh, the 750 round cyclic rate limit you know, with this system. So that's a little bit of a concern that I would have in the, in the cold weather with the numbers that we got uh, with the rate of fire being right on the lower lower edge. For the first fire, as what we had here, uh, it did meet the cyclic rate limit. It was right there at the 750 rounds per minute. I also see this as being a major benefit with the suppressors as well. Now, who would want, would want to buy one of these things? You know, they're $429. Who would really benefit from this? Well, certainly anybody who's, who's firing on fully automatic would benefit from it because what it's going to do is it's going to lower the cyclic rate. It's going to cause less wear and tear on the components. It's going to give a little bit of additional time for the, for the uh, dwell time, so you're going to have it a little bit easier on your extractor. Um, so certainly fully automatic, you would, you would gain a benefit. The next person who's going to, who's going to gain it is somebody who's using suppressed because you're again going to have a higher rate of fire due to the, um, additional back pressure caused by the sound suppressor. So with that lowering that cyclic rate and, in, and the increase in the dwell time, this would certainly aid you in that. Now, who else this would aid is somebody who has a improper sized, oversized gas port or has a severe uh, amount of gas port erosion, which is allowing more gas into the system. So what that will do with having a lower cyclic rate, it'll definitely uh, give you more life on that barrel for as far as uh, damaging your bolt and wearing out your, your fire control groups components. So those are the three conditions where this would be very, very beneficial. So overall, it's done everything that it says it's going to do. Uh, there's no question. You know, the, uh, the two major concerns that I had, you know, again, number one is going to be uh, for as far as the bolt catch taking additional beating like our 9mm submachine guns did. Uh, so only time will tell with people who use these things extensively to see if it's going to cause any issues with that whatsoever. And two would be uh, the use of it in cold weather. With it being on the lowest end of the cycle rate, I'd very be very concerned about how the cold would impact the, uh, the chamber pressure and port pressure, which could cause it to fall under the cycle rate limit, which it could cause malfunctions or induce malfunctions. So uh, overall, uh, it's certainly very, very impressive. It is definitely a drop-in solution. It certainly uh, does cost a good amount of money. I would, I would have liked to have seen some improvements to the bolt. So if you look at the two of these, well, what's the, what are you going to get out of the enhanced bolt carrier group, out of the LMT that you're not going to get out of the uh, optimized bolt carrier group and vice versa? Well, the most important thing I think that really happens with any of this is you have an increase in dwell time. And again, with allowing the cartridge to have time to have a decrease in its residual pressure allows the shorter gas system to extract much more easily, which both of these uh, carrier groups do. I'd also be a little bit concerned as I have a feeling that uh, Carlos may have patented this cam track. I'm not quite sure. I guess that's up for his lawyers to decide. Uh, for as far as the bolt carrier, uh, you're getting rid of uh, you know, you know, extra uh, pressure. The LMT does a little bit better than that, uh, than the optimized group does by having an additional hole here. So it does get rid of excess gas a little bit more. You do have a heavier bolt carrier uh, as well. But uh, the fact that this goes back into the receiver uh, that gives you that much more travel is something that's going to definitely aid in that uh, cyclic rate being slowed down. I don't imagine the LMT enhancement would really slow down your cyclic rate too much. It would just uh, slow up a little bit on the opening stroke, which was what the M-Force problem really, really was. So, um, you know, the, the range told us a lot. The, the use of the cyclic rate and, uh, and being able to test that uh, tells us a lot. Because unfortunately, without testing cyclic rates, you have no idea what it's going to do for as far as slowing down the action. You can't really uh, tell by firing on semi, so you definitely need to fire on full auto to be able to see that. And our data came back, uh, you know, it does exactly what it's supposed to do. 
So I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you do, please click like, please subscribe, and even better, share. Thank you.